What started as a geopolitical conflict between two former World War II allies quickly evolved into a race for global supremacy as the U.S. and USSR aimed to outdo each other in almost every aspect. During the aftermath of World War II, many European nations were left in an economic crisis. These nations became communist due to influences from the nearby USSR, otherwise known as the Soviet Union, which sought to spread this economic system globally. The US, a pillar of freedom and democracy, feared the spread of communism. On March 12, 1947, President Truman enacted the Truman Doctrine, a foreign policy initiative that countered the expansion of communism through containment, a geopolitical strategy used to stop the advancement of an enemy. Truman points the way to a new foreign policy. Timed to coincide with the sitting of the Moscow Conference, the speech means that the United States now faces up to its international responsibilities. America has decided that her true frontiers are in Europe. Furthermore, on June 3, 1948, the Marshall Plan was placed to help Western European nations battle communism by giving them $13 billion in economic aid. In order to protect North America and several Western European nations from Soviet influences, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, otherwise known as NATO, was established in 1949. This is the Kremlin, citadel of Russian communism. Looking at Russia, we might see it as a country to be studied, as we study other nations of the world. Yet we know that Russia today is regarded as a grave threat to our nation, to our freedom, to the peace of the world. The fear received by Americans within their homeland evoked a negative response towards communist ideas. Anti-communist propaganda caused a widespread panic throughout the public. This fear of communism became known as the Red Scare. The unleashing of the Red Scare led to a mob movement known as McCarthyism, the accusation of civilians without proper evidence. Started by John McCarthy, a U.S. Senator in the early 1950s, McCarthyism caused many people to lose their jobs, social lives, and reputations. This paranoia lasted for four years until Joseph Welch, a councilman for the U.S. Army, struck down all ideas of McCarthyism in a verbal argument with McCarthy himself. Welch ended the mass panic in 1954. Competition between the U.S. and the USSR developed in many fields such as astronomy, military weaponry, and geography. As tensions rose, the USSR began testing nuclear weapons in 1949. They conducted their first test at the semi palatinsk test site in what is now known as Kazakhstan. The first atomic bomb was codenamed RDS-1. The U.S. gave notice to the Soviet Union's testing of these massive weapons and decided to expand their own nuclear arsenal. This marked the beginning of the nuclear arms race. In 1962, the nuclear conflict had reached its peak. In order to intimidate the U.S., the Soviet Union gave Cuba nuclear missiles. Due to Cuba's close proximity to the U.S., many Americans began to fear for their lives. This event became known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Many political leaders from both sides were engaged in a tense 13-day standoff until President Kennedy reached a compromise with Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet leader at the time. The deal stated that the USSR would pull out their missiles if the US agreed to not invade Cuba as well as to remove their missiles from Turkey. The following year, many political leaders from the Soviet Union and the US had agreed to sign the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, a document limiting the testing of nuclear weapons underwater in outer space and in the atmosphere. If there had not been a compromise, nuclear weapons testing would be unregulated and potentially illegal. Despite the aggressive competition for military domination, the two superpowers also battled in space exploration, otherwise known as the space race. The space race served as a symbol for each nation's economy and scientific achievements. Initially taking wind in 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first man-made object, a satellite, into orbit. The satellite, named Sputnik, was a surprise to the world as it marked the beginning of developments in space technology. 
In order to combat any possibility of Soviet victory, the U.S. established a federal agency in 1958 dedicated to space exploration. This agency became known as NASA, or the National Aeronautics Space Agency. NASA's first objective was to launch a manned vehicle into space as soon as possible. However, in the face of continuous efforts, the USSR was the first to succeed. Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first person to enter Earth's orbit in the aircraft Vostok 1. As a response to this unprecedented Soviet victory, President John F. Kennedy created the Apollo program, which pledged to send a man to the moon by 1970. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The creation of the Apollo program helped the United States succeed in sending Neil Armstrong to the moon in 1969, officially ending the space race. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. As the U.S. competed with the Soviet Union during the Cold War, many nations in Europe were conflicted with the ideals of communism. Stark believers in communism, East Germany, otherwise known as the German Democratic Republic, ran into many problems facing West Berlin, a capitalist enclave. Many civilians from East Berlin were defecting towards the West, seeking capitalist freedom. To keep defectors in and capitalist influences out, the German Democratic Republic encircled West Berlin in what is now known as the Berlin Wall on August 13, 1961, becoming one of the most most powerful symbols of the Cold War. This wall, symbolically as well as geographically, kept capitalism contained in a country ruled by communism. Despite the US and the USSR never engaging in physical warfare, the Cold War caused many real encounters between communism and capitalism. These encounters included the Greek Civil War, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and the Soviet-Afghan War. Many of these wars fought over which economic system should govern their country. Eventually, the USSR and the US were starting to grow tired of the long political battle they had taken part in. Over the course of 44 years, the US and the Soviet Union were at each other's throats in almost every department that could improve a nation. Many conflicts arose between the two powers, and by 1985, the conflicts were coming to an end. After eight years, the current leader of the USSR, Mikhail Gorbachev, met with the US President Ronald Reagan to hold a summit conference and reach a compromise. Six agreements were reached during the conference, ranging from cultural and scientific exchanges to environmental issues. Due to the increasing cost of the the Soviet-Afghan War and the nuclear arms race, Gorbachev met in order to provide domestic economic solutions to his country, while Reagan met wanting to bring the nuclear arms race under control. With the end of the Soviet-Afghan War in 1989, Gorbachev also halted the expansion of communism in Eastern Europe, as well as the continuing existence of the Berlin Wall. I'm Peter Jennings in New York just a short while ago. Astonishing news from East Germany, where the East German authorities have said, in essence, that the Berlin Wall doesn't mean anything anymore. The wall that the East Germans put up in 1961 to keep its people in will now be breached by anybody one who wants to leave. The Great Barricade soon fell on November 9th, 1989, when the East German Communist Party allowed citizens of the German Democratic Republic to cross freely into West Berlin. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> After the fall of the wall, President George W. Bush and Gorbachev met in the Malta summit of 1989. There, they declared the end of the Cold War. Two years after, the Soviet Union dissolved into several republics. The Soviet Union's flag lowered for the last time over the Kremlin and was soon replaced with the Russian flag. Gorbachev then resigned from his position, leaving Boris Yeltsin to take command of the new Russia. The fall of the Soviet Union in December 1991 was seen as a Western victory for freedom and democracy over the ideas of totalitarianism and communism. The Cold War was one of the most prominent periods of our time. It produced conflicts between nations, civilians, and governments. It created compromises through treaties, laws, and resolutions. A substantial and immense age filled with political and physical warfare, competition of sciences abroad, as well as countless conflicts and compromises, the Cold War will always be a period significant to human history while serving as a prime example of the conflict and compromise in our society.